<sighs> How are we doing, Heat Nation? Just 24 hours after a debilitating, demoralizing, crucial loss. Uh, it's been a weird day, I'll say. You had a, a solar eclipse, uh, which really is, if you were in South Florida, there was, there was no difference. Uh, a, a bit over height, the solar eclipse, I will say. Uh, but a bunch of weird things. I guess you have that. No NBA basketball today as you have the uh, the championship game. NCAA men's, you got UConn versus... Who they playing? I don't, to be honest, once I knew I could have win my bracket, I really stopped paying attention. That's right. They playing Zach Eady. That's 7-4 bum. So you got one 7-4 bum versus the 7-2 bum on, on the other team. I, I shouldn't be calling these kids bums. I got to realize in life, I'm at the point now where I'm watching people play basketball that are younger than me. And I just feel bad talking trash about, about kids. I guess Tyler Hero is younger, younger than me. And I do that a lot about him. But, but anyways, one thing that is not weird is TJ McConnell killing the heat. Uh, I just saw a quote from him, uh, or a quote from someone else on, on the page, I forget who, like Aaron Neesmith or Miles Turner or someone, and they said that TJ McConnell feels disrespectful or disrespected when a white guy guards him, and that's why he went off yesterday. I don't know if there's any credibility to that, but anyways, uh, that's where we're at now as Heat Nation is we're seeing quotes like that. Uh, as, of course, I'm recording this about 24 hours after the Heat lost to the Pacers. Uh, a little bit of a late upload tonight because I was just hooping. You know, what better thing to do when you are frustrated than go hoop? Uh, but really, I, I hoop I hoop every day. But I just wanted to get a video out because there's a few things to talk about. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of the injuries. You got Duncan Robinson, Terry Wazir. I want to talk about that BS last two-minute report that came out. Jimmy had some quotes today. Uh, and just some overall thoughts that, uh, that I've been hearing. So basically, there is a way where the Heat are still out of the plan. You know, they can make the 6 seed, but you either need like Indiana to lose two or Atlanta to lose three. And basically a bunch of stuff that is very likely not going to happen. So you want to start operating under the assumption that you're going to be in the plan, right? And either it's going to be there's a seven seed or eight seed. The only difference is the seven seed is home. Now, Miami's home record is actually worse than their road record this season. So I really don't care if they finish seventh or eighth. I'll be real with you. They play in uh, the 76ers either way, which is going to be an insanely difficult matchup, but a very important one because obviously the loser could miss the playoffs entirely. Let's not even assume the Heat are going to make the playoffs, right? Because if you lose that first game, the second game will be against the winner of Chicago versus Atlanta. And if you lose that game, well, then you miss the playoffs. But if you win, you're the eight seed, you play the Boston Celtics. That's not what we want, right? If you win the first game versus 76ers, you play the two seed, which is right now the Bucks, who are in a terrible rut right now losing four straight to some pretty bad teams or the orlando magic could actually be the number two seed and for obvious reasons if you're the miami heat should much rather have a chance at the bucks or magic than the than the boston celtics but anyways a couple of things that might be concerning regarding that is it looks like the heat might not be as healthy as we thought uh the one guy i kind of want to focus in on is duncan robinson who uh, was playing really well, obviously, this season as a whole. is having a major bounce back season, not just shooting the ball insanely great, but also, obviously, is much more versatile in his game. His driving game, his passing game has been phenomenal. Uh, but he did go out just, what, a few games ago with a couple weeks ago, I guess, with the back injury. And since returning, he's been bad. Uh, I went back to the beginning of March and looked at, you know, until his injury, which was, I guess, like around mid-March. He was at, uh, for the month, 15 points a game on 39 percent shooting from three on nine attempts and he went all and since he missed five games with the back injury they said he had some spasms and he just it wasn't right so he just basically rested didn't get no sort of i'm sure he was getting shots and injections and stuff but missed five games and in the five games since he returned he's down from 15 points per game to five points per game and he's down from 39 percent from three to 23 percent from three which is terrible obviously no other way to look at it and even the the attempts are down from nine attempts per game to five attempts per game obviously you've got some guys back in that span like tyler hero so the attempts are going to go down a little bit but what you're really concerned about is that three-point shooting and i guess not even so much the three-point shooting because a guy like that can get into a, a little bit of a slump and you trust him to get out of it but it's the way he looks physically right this is something I've noticed. It's something I've heard a lot of other people talk about. It's not like I'm breaking news here. I heard Ethan Skolnick, Tobin. Uh, when you watch Duncan Robinson over these last five games, he's not moving the same. You don't see a lot of those quick, uh, you know, pump face, beat guys off the dribble, try to drive him for a floater. You don't see a lot of those quick cuts back door. He just doesn't look as bouncy, really. 
and i attribute some of that to obviously when he comes back i give him a couple games to get the rust off and then you kind of got tyler hero back inserted so now he has a bit of a different role not getting as much minutes not getting as much run with bam to bio and jimmy obviously he was been still starting but it's still a little bit of a different role so i don't know if it's to to attribute some of his struggles to that but regardless you know what whether it is he doesn't look healthy i think that is the major reason for his play and a big reason I think this Heat team was so scary going into the postseason all year is because of the development of Duncan Robinson. If he is not what he's been all season, that's a big loss to this team. Uh, I almost wonder if you should find the time to give him rest over these next four games to make sure he is as close to 100% healthy as possible going into the playing because that's the guy that you really need. Uh, and they were bad in the games that he missed because you needed his shooting, but now maybe you can afford to let him rest because you do got Tyler Hero back who has been shooting the ball well. One reason you may not be able to do that is because now you also got Terry Rozier questionable. And that's kind of the other guy I want to talk about for a minute here is because he was poor versus the Pacers, only played like 20 minutes at four points. He was questionable going into the game with a neck injury. And it obviously looked like it affected him because he didn't play pre uh, many minutes and he was bad. Uh, and he even said after the game, which kind of felt really bad for him, he, he was kind of, you know, very, very sad about it. He said that he probably shouldn't have played. He felt like he was out there hurting the team. Uh, and I respect him for going out there and trying to be a warrior. Uh, and, you know, he played 20 minutes. I don't think he's the reason that, that he got down so so big early. But uh, you need Terry Rozier as well because he's been playing amazing, obviously, before Tyler Hero came back. And it's unfortunate because Terry Rozier is questionable going into the Hawks game tomorrow. But it's unfortunate because you really needed these last five or six games with the entire group to get the chemistry going. Because I think one of the things that a lot of Heat fans, including myself, are worried about is the fit with Terry Rozier and Tyler Hero. Would they both start? Would they both play at the same time? Would they both close? And I think those were questions that you really wanted to see get answered in this last week of the season. And if Terry Rozier misses some time, you might not be able to do that but i just hope that he was in such a great groove i hope he is able to get the minutes that he deserves uh, and stay in the rhythm that he's been in uh, prior to this neck injury which i hope is nothing too serious he said it's like a little bit more of a pain than if he just slept on it wrong so he doesn't think it's just that but it wasn't nothing too crucial uh, and that is why he is questionable tomorrow He's another guy, if you can, if you're playing the Hawks team, Trey Young is practicing today. I don't know if he'll be back for the game tomorrow, but I think they're actually better without Trey Young. Uh, but anyways, uh, Trey Young, he's going to be sensational on San Antonio. It, it, can we just assume that's a done deal? I mean, that pick and roll duo between him and Wemby is going to be crazy. And if you're the Hawks, you better without Trey Young. Let's, let's admit it. Anyways, I digress on that. Uh, I hope Terry Wazir can get some rest because... I just my goal is I want to be full throttle going into that playing tournament. I, I really, really do. Uh, if you got these guys banged up, Duncan and Terry, you know that's your starting backcourt right there. You're playing with fire, and in the playing tournament, as the eight seed or seven seed, you only got two chances. And when you only got two chances to win one game, it's not a guarantee that you'll get either one of them. So, uh, moving on though, talking about a little bit more about that game. The last two minute report came out. Uh, basically, uh, there was that one call where uh, Tyler Hero and Bam were, were trying to trap him Miles Turner at the top of the key, trying to force a turnover like under 30 seconds to go. Tyler Hero looks like he got a strip. They called foul. Last two minute uh, report confirmed it should not have been a foul. All I really got to say about that is one, uh, I'm not really a fan of the last two minute report. I don't see the point of it. And quite frankly, there's been dozens of times where they come out with a last two minute report and I don't agree with it. There's been times I've seen the heat get screwed and they say it was the right call and I, I disagree. A lot of times I think that last two minute uh, is just politics, you know, just to prove that the refs get it right most of the time. And when they show their statistics at the end of the year, I think it's all crap, to be honest with you. Uh, but on top of that, a lot of heat fans were mad at Scott Foster. I don't care at this point, like maybe not in this game and in, in the playoffs like last year, certainly. But right now, the Heat got bigger problems than the officiating. And that's not why they were down 22 yesterday. They were down 22 because they, they were missing open shots and couldn't guard TJ McConnell. So I, I'm not too mad at the officiating uh, there. Uh, moving on, Jimmy Butler had a quote today, or I think it was after the game yesterday. He had said something along the lines of uh, why... Are, uh, he had said something like, uh, it's been, it, we've never made it easy, so why should we start now? Something like that. 
Uh, and my response to that is, well, because you never won a championship, Jimmy Butler, because your body's always banged up by the time it gets, you know, to the, to late in the, the playoffs, or at least last year, we could say that, because he wasn't the same player in the NBA Finals. We don't know if that's because of Josh Hart's ankle. It very well could have been, but that's the point, you know? You want to make it easy so your body's not banged up, so you can maybe get a little bit of rest and have time to game plan in between games and not have to play a seven game series and go into the finals where the team just swept the other team and they're well rested which was the case last year so that's why you want to make it easy that being said i don't want to get on jimmy butler for that like a lot of people on twitter were today like the dude's just talking after a game i think he's just trying to remain positive while also showing that he's concerned right because he's the leader he doesn't want to seem shook that's not his mo but he also doesn't want to be all out there smiling and happy because I'm sure he is pissed. And I do think Jimmy Butler play, played a pretty good game yesterday. But that's why I don't I don't want to I don't like to nitpick every word that these athletes say, especially after games, because they just got done playing a game. They don't have time to sit there and think and formulate their thoughts, you know, for for a while. Uh, so I, I get what he's saying. He's just saying it is what it is. We're not going to cry uh, and we're, we're going to play ball. And that part of it, I do respect. Uh, the last topic here I kind of want to discuss is I was just listening to the five on the floor podcast with Ethan Skolnick and one of the things they mentioned is how a lot of Heat fans this was the case last year too though after the Heat lost the finals but a lot of Heat fans are mad that they won that playing game versus the Bulls because it tricked and, and that it led to that run you know to the finals that tricked the front office into thinking this team was good I think there's some you know theory to that uh but at the same time I I I, I don't think it's that big a, a, a reasoning because I think the team tried to get uh, Damian Lillard. There's been different, you know, different reporting on that, but I do think they tried to get Damian Lillard. I think Joe Cronin was just being a petty asshole. That's why I wrote the diss track on him. You know, if y'all didn't see it, just Google Joe Cronin diss track. Y'all see, I wrote a whole rap about him to the Tupac song. But uh, I think the Heat team tried uh, and they couldn't do it. You know, uh, and on top of that, the it, we hear that the sticking point was like Tyler Hero. The Heat never wanted to trade Tyler Hero, but Tyler Hero had zero impact in last year's playoff run because he was obviously hurt in game one of the playoffs. So I don't really see how that finals run could have tricked the Heat into thinking Tyler Hero is more valuable than he is. If anything, it would have made them more likely to trade him. It just obviously sounds like nobody really wanted Tyler Hero. And I will say, though, too, I think there's a lot of value. Uh, obviously, uh, the season was a failure. Don't get me wrong championship is the expectations and when you don't win a championship it was a failure but i do think there's something to be said about getting there that far and showcasing to the world that you are a championship caliber organization because all the free agents in the future or even before these guys become free agents like donovan mitchell for example they can look at miami and say this team knows how to put together a talented team enough to go on a deep run and i can put them over the top if you're donovan mitchell and you don't want to be in Cleveland and you want to go to a new team, are you going to choose Philadelphia, who hasn't been out of the second round in Joel Embiid's tenure? Or are you going to choose the Miami Heat, who has shown they can make deep playoff runs year after year after year? And on top of that, maybe you even got kids growing up now watching Jimmy Butler dominate in the Eastern Conference Finals and in the 2020 Bubble Finals and saying, I am a Heat fan because of him. I want to join the Miami Heat one day. Because kind of like with D-Wade. Now, I know D-Wade was a champion, transcendent player, one of the greatest ever that's not Jimmy Butler, but we're seeing that now still. Guys like Bradley Beal wanted to join the Heat because of Dame. Well, you didn't get him. Guys like, well, Jimmy Butler joined the Heat because of Wade. I mean, <laughs> Beal wanted to join because of Wade. Uh, Jimmy Butler because of Wade. Obviously, that's because they, they made friends in Chicago. But Terry Rozier liked the Miami Heat because of Dwayne Wade. And it's because Dwayne Wade was a winner. He got success in the postseason. And I just think, I, I don't think there's anything negative that can come out of having sustained playoff success, you know, or sustain, sustained playoff runs, even if you don't call it a success, because really it, it wasn't. Like I said, they lost in the finals. Uh, that being said, that, that's really all I got to say for this video. Uh, let me know y'all thoughts down below. Are you concerned that the Miami Heat are in the play and do you think they have any chance of missing the playoffs? I just want to hear all y'all thoughts down below. But most importantly, make sure to subscribe and like the video because it does help me out a lot. And I'm going to say it again. Subscribe. I'm on the ground at 5K. It really means a lot. I appreciate y'all. See y'all next time. Look, pull up in the city, tryna get that dead fast Slash, Do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight right? Had to kill him off, yeah, I need a headspace You know this homegrown bitch, don't a fan, mate hmm.